today I'm going to preach to start the year 2021, the year of undeniable impact in our first series of the year, Unstoppable, a sermon that I have entitled Relationship Drama. Relationship Drama. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there will be drama. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High. Some people sound like they're already in the midst of some relationship drama. In 2021, I want to be straight to the point. In that this year, I pray that you develop a relationship with God. I don't want a cheesy amen. Because I truly mean what I'm saying here. I pray that above all, you develop a relationship with God. I've learned that people think that all things work for good for everybody. That's not what the scripture says. I've learned that people believe that as long as you can believe it and be positive, that if you can just get some right energy in your life, that things will change. I don't doubt that things may change, but the question is who's changing them? Scripture tells us that all things work for good. Doesn't tell us that all things are good. Doesn't say that it's always all good. That's why I've come to realize that I don't always have to be positive. If I always had to be positive, then the scripture would be filled with no negativity. But I'm grateful for people like Paul that tell it like it is. That don't hide the truth of a relationship with God. That loving God isn't easy. That loving God will not always be convenient. That loving God will not always be pleasurable. Because if it was, God wouldn't ask us to be obedient. I've learned to realize that loving God will take something out of you. That's why Jesus said, to come to me, you don't have to like me. To come to me, you don't have to be inspired by me. To come to me, you must first deny yourself. Come on now. That means that I want something more at that very point in time, but I make a decision to live or follow God. Therefore, I want to implore you today that if there's anything that you need to do in this year, it's to love God. I want to take the first few weeks of this year helping you grow spiritually. I'm grateful because I know that there will be many people who give you motivation. But I've learned that nothing changes with motivation. The only thing that changes is the word because it brings transformation. I've learned to realize, if anything I've learned from 2020, is that loving God is hard. But I want you to know that scripture tells us that all things work for good to those who what? Who love the Lord and are called according to his good purpose. Whenever there's frustration and situations in your life, I promise you they're not after your business. I promise you they're not after your relationship. I I promise you they're not after your friends. I promise you they're after your love. If there's anything that the enemy wants to shift, it's not your cash flow. If there's anything that the enemy wants to move, it's your heart. Because Jesus never said that their wallets were towards me. Or their businesses had had my name on them. He never said they carried my bumper sticker. He said their hearts were not turned towards me. So, I know I want to start heavy this day. Because I really feel it's important that we give you the right push. In the right direction. 
I will ease up the remainder of the year. But let me start and tell you like it is. If this year is going to be a year of undeniable impact, it means there will be things that will arise that will try to deny you. You cannot walk in a year that is titled undeniable impact and not expect resistance. Nobody starts a journey of change or transformation without expecting resistance. And what I've realized is that our ability to handle resistance doesn't affect God, it affects us. And I said love is the catalyst because, beloved, your love matters. I know that there is a teaching that says, oh, God's love is great. It is. God's love never changes. His faithfulness never changes. You know, it does not change. He does not change. The, it remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. So therefore, where is the change? The change is with us. And I know some people will tell you that, yes, as long as God loves you, that's all you need. Let me tell you something. God loves everybody, but there's some people who are still going to hell. Not because God doesn't love them, but because they didn't receive the love of God. And why this is critical is because his love equals grace. Our love equals faith. So if your love is broken, it affects your faith. If your love for God is broken, it doesn't affect his grace. It affects your grace. Grace, both of them are equal and required in this equation. Because grace works through faith. And if faith is important, what affects faith is love. Galatians chapter uh, uh, 5 verse 6 says this. I know it's not here, but I wrote this down. Galatians 5 verse 6. It says, faith worketh by love. So if my love isn't right, my faith can't be right. If my love for God, listen, I don't know what you are believing God for. But if your love for him isn't in the right place, your faith is amiss. That's why James says, even if you ask, you ask amiss. You ask for your own lustful desires. So my prayer today is for you to posture your heart in the right direction. So God wants a relationship of love. Somebody say love. Come on, somebody say love. God wants a relationship of love where you love each other. He expresses his love for you and you express your love for him. But let me say it this way. No relationship is free of drama. Listen, every relationship you see has drama. Oh, nobody saying amen? Every, every, everyone, your couple goes, there's drama. There's drama. No matter how perfect you may think they are, there's drama. Can I also put it this way? You, you come with drama. It's easy when we look for people. To be drama free. Meanwhile, we. I'm preaching today. Every one of you comes with drama. I've learned that even in relationships, everyone looks sane when they're single. As soon as you enter, no sooner that. Not only do they move their weak, they remove the sense. Am I talking? Even him, as cool as he may be, drama. There's every relationship. You know, there were some prophets back in the days that said, Sunny days, everybody loves those. Tell me, girl, can you stand? May God deliver you. <laughs> yeah, because, listen.
listen, I don't want somebody to just love me in the sun. I want somebody to love me in the rain when it's not convenient. Not the notebook. I'm not talking about the notebook here. I'm talking about when there are rainy seasons, stormy seasons in your life. Why? I want you to write this down. Because genuine relationship is strengthened by trial. If a relationship is genuine, a trial will strengthen it. So if your relationship with God is genuine, A trial won't separate you. It will draw you closer to him. Look at this. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. It says, a friend is always loyal. And a brother is born to help in time of need. The relationship is strengthened by adversity. Why would I need loyalty unless there will be situations that will question my loyalty, where I would require loyalty. And a brother is born for a time of need. So genuine relationships, in other words, there are people we pick and there are people we are born with that are stronger with us in times It's amazing how we pick physical relationships based on the trials. But we run away from spiritual relationships because of trials. It's amazing how we want loyalty in tough times, but the minute things get tough, we are the first ones who want to be out of that situation. Could it be that God has allowed you to go through some things so he can see your loyalty? Could it be that God has allowed you to go through some situations so he can show you how loyal he is? You see, beloved, going to be in a relationship with God comes with drama. God has a tendency of picking people and putting them through dramatic situations. To show you that he is God over that situation. That's why he said when you walk through the fire. He didn't say I'm taking away the fire. He says I'll be with you in the fire. I'll be with you in the waters. I'll be with you in every situation. I want to declare a word over your life in 2021. May God be with you in every situation. Because if God be for me, then who can be? against me. God wants you to go through some things because if you go through some things, your relationship will get stronger. That's why he says, count it all joy. <laughs> I'm preaching today. Let me tell you something. 2021 is not going to get easier. You better change your mindset. Tell me, Happy New Year, goodbye, 2020. Nothing. Nothing. They even said there's a second wave. So if you had no faith in, for the first wave, you better have faith for the second wave. Imagine. And it's like they timed this thing. They let us chill. August, September, November, then they're back at you no know, second wave. Christmas, second wave, sure. I am in no ways belittling what is happening. But if you think that you're going to glide through this year without gaining stronger or getting stronger spiritually, you're playing games. You're playing games. My prayer for you is that God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you. I told you, having a relationship has drama. Those of us who are in relationships, it's like drama even draws us closer. When you think of leaving, you're like, but who will accept my craziness? 
Do you know how much rubbish I've been through? Have, have you ever seen somebody who's been in a, in a dramatic relationship and you're telling them, just leave? They're like, you don't understand. There's something about drama that instead of repelling you, you just look at them and say, you, no one can love you like me. Because I'm the only one who can accept. That's why my wife is anointed. She's anointed for my drama. She, amen, baby. She's anointed. Don't look at these things. I said, me also, I just want a pastor, a man of... Okay. 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 Do you know what life is like, you? We don't have Saturdays. We don't have Sundays. It's drama. Zero three, you're waking up. Boom. Be, 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 be. It's drama. No, I also want to be called by God. Me, I have an anointing, my friend. Ah. Why would there be an anointing unless there are yokes that are coming? Unless there are bondages that are coming? Unless there are enemies that are coming? You think the anointing is for sure? This is not a spiritual showroom. The anointing must be put to work. And I've come to realize 2020 was hard. But I was like, Lord, after everything I've gone through, where will I go? I understand, David. When he's like, where will I go? Even in hell, you are there. In hell, you are there. David was saying, even if I backslide, you'll be like, my guy, what's the deal? Let's go back, man. Some, some of us, it's too late. It's too late. Just give it up. Let it go. The more you try, the more it seems useless. Just let it go. Let that old life go. What are you trying to prove? Let it go. You used to be cool. It's over. Leave it. You're no longer cool. Leave it. Look at your neighbor and say, there is drama. There is drama. When you follow God, there is drama. When you read the Bible, it's like a drama. <laughs> Mary was scheduled to marry Joseph until the Holy Ghost showed up. <laughs> Maria, you are pregnant. By the Holy Ghost. It's drama. Every biblical character says drama. Drama after drama. But God expects that in spite of the drama, you don't lose your dedication. No matter the drama, you keep your faith. Why? Because write this down. Everything is God sent or God used. Everything is God sent or God used. What does that mean? Either it is for his glory or he will get the glory out of it. Oh, man, that's an offering right there. Either he sent it for his glory or he will get the glory out of it. But either way, he's getting glory. How do I know this? There was a boy who was born blind. And the disciples were like, who sinned? The parents or the boy? Hold up. The scripture said he was born blind. What time was the boy born blind sinning? Was he insulting in his mother's womb? No. But Jesus answered and said, neither. What he was saying is it doesn't matter. But I will still get the glory out of this. Listen, stop asking for answers. Because Jesus is the answer. 
Stop asking for explanations for your situation and start looking for the revelation that you need to get to get out of that situation. I came to preach to a few people. It doesn't matter whether you are sick. It doesn't matter whether you are poor. It doesn't matter whether you've been set back. It doesn't matter whether 2020 left you behind. It doesn't matter who said anything about you. If God be for you, then who can be against you? He's going to get the glory out of that situation. He's going to get the glory out of your breakup. He's going to get the glory out of your job loss. He's going to get the glory out of that death. He's going to get the glory out of every situation. May God get glory. Preaching to myself today. Let me tell you guys something. I went, I, I went to, a, to a factory the other day. I need to start wrapping up. I went to, a, there's a factory somewhere here in Dola, right? There's a factory. I don't want to name it in case you get put up. You know, the social media stuff. And what they do is they crush soya seed right soya beans to get edible oils okay so i went on a plant a tour of the plant and they told me oh this is where the seed comes in so the warehouse that's where all the seeds come then they go into this 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 uh this plant where they crush the soya beans and get the edible oil so the oil comes out what they want to do is get the oil but somebody was sharp and said my goodness there's a byproduct from this oil it's called seed how and then they say you can soya cake because the soya cake is what what they sell to farmers and is what is used to feed animals Holland cake so they start to sell the cake then they begin to run it through the refinery and from the refinery there's a byproduct called fat and from the fat they make cooking uh, oils and they also make detergents and they make soaps and what he said is that we leave nothing wasted come on you didn't hear what I said we leave nothing wasted what you see as unwanted what you see as unnecessary they create value out of it i pray for you all the unnecessary drama all the unwanted situations may god create value out of it all those situations where they thought they left you for dead may god turn it into value may god make product out of it may all may god put it on shelves where other people want it can i preach to you just because you've been dumped don't think that's the end of your life i see you in the future becoming a counselor helping other people going through situations what you thought was unnecessary was value can I preach to some of you some of you are going through something right now and you're asking why me it has nothing to do with you God is giving you value for the future God is giving you value for the future. I always tell people, me, when I studied school, I, I, one pick, course I picked was sociology. I picked it for no reason. No reason. And all I knew is that, hey, I needed to get another course. And I picked sociology because it was a, it was a study of society and pe people. Understanding culture. Little did I know I needed for church. Little did I know I needed for understanding environments that I was being sent into. Nothing you have been through will be wasted in your life. Listen to me. Nothing you have been through shall be wasted in your life. Paul knew this. Paul understood this. Paul who says, all things work for the good. All things. Paul, are you the same one? Who says, I was stabbed, I was robbed, I was shipwrecked, I was threatened, I was cast out, I was lashed 39 times. All things. You see, I've realized that there's something that God is trying to bring out through Paul. Paul is saying, I was stabbed, I survived. I was shipwrecked, I survived. I was imprisoned, I got out. I, I was left to die, I didn't die. I, I, I was attacked, they didn't kill me. What he was saying in every situation, God, God got the glory out of that situation. So I want to encourage you today. You may have been dumped, you will survive. You may have lost your job, you will survive. You may have lost opportunities, you will survive. People may have forgotten you, you will make it.
you will get out of every situation that you are in right now that situation is not the end of your life don't let a detour derail your destiny be focused on God continue loving him continue worshiping him that's why David said I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will forever be in my mouth he didn't say that in the palace he said that in the cave oh I wish you would just turn your mouth from complaining to praise while you are in this situation right now say God I thank you I'm here I thank you I'm in this very situation because I know that in this situation you're going to get the glory I may be unemployed but you're going to get the glory I may be single but you're going to get the glory I may be jobless but you're going to get the glory my business may be down but you're going to get the glory I'm willing to stick through this relationship drama heavenly father I'm not giving up on you now for richer or poorer for better or worse we are stick to go sticking together two by two caterpillar my prayer for you if anyone had a reason to give up on God it was Paul he had every reason okay Paul shows us a very valuable reason. Everything he went through. If you, if you read that, all that, you'd be like, this guy has sinned. But he says, are they not men of God? In other words, am I not anointed? Am I not called? But I've been through everything. Because all things work for the glory. Because I want you to know this. God wants you to trust him even when you can't trace him. Trust doesn't require you to see him. Trust just needs you to know that he's there. Somebody hearing me today. That's the word I wanted to give you today. In spite of whatever situation, let it go. He's there. He's got you covered. Look at your neighbor say, I'm covered. It might look like you're losing things, but you're covered. It might look like it's tough, but you're covered. Uh, Deacon Jones, please come. Come start playing very quickly. Let me, let me tell you guys a story as, as we wind up. A few weeks ago, there was a flood. Or heavy rains here. Two weeks ago, right? Pastor C, when was that? Three weeks ago? Yeah, something like that. This, this church has been flooded about three times in the last five years. It's almost frustrating. And every year, we lose things. It's like it's annual. In fact, it was right, right before the sanctuary offering. The day before the sanctuary offering, we were flooded. Right? So it's about four weeks I get a call from Rumbi. Shout out to Rumbi. He gives me a call. He says, Pastor, I just want to tell you that the church is flooded. I'm like, that's not good news. I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm calling Pastor C, Pastor Tsala. And Pastor Tsala is also like, ah, yes, sir, it's flooded. Like, he's reporting good news as well. Because everybody knows I'm about to blow. If you know me, I look up. I blow, I blow, right? I blow. I'm for pressure. I'm not going to lie to you. No, I'm for pressure. Me, I'm for pressure. Because pressure makes diamonds. If you want to work with me, be ready for pressure. I'm not ashamed. I feel like my wife rolling her head back. I'm for pressure. So everyone knew. Yeah! And then they're calling me before they've told me. Because if you, if you know me, my, my thesis is very simple. You tell me the problem, you tell me what's wrong, and you tell me how we're going to fix it. If you don't have the solution, don't call me. Right? Don't leave me with the problem. You're better off telling me, oh, we checked, this is broken. So I'm releasing wisdom to everyone here. 
right? However, we have done this. We put it to dry, waiting for it. So I'm like, what's working? What's not working? And I'm about to flip. And they come. They tell me, we check. Are the cameras working? And, 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 and by God's grace, the day before, we were shooting, right? We were shooting something in my office. And I said, don't put the cameras on the floor, Holy Ghost. Shandalabosa. I can feel the anointing right there. I said, put them on the chair. I don't know why I told Pastor C, don't take them to the room. Where would I place them on the floor? I said, place them on the chair. And the next day, what looked like an arbitrary decision, saved the equipment. Nonetheless, they're like, oh, okay, sir, this is working. And I reach. And my energy has gone. And I'm, I'm upset. Because in my mind, I'm like, we've lost the equipment. Then I call Leanne to tell her we had a flood. And she says, no worries, I'll just call insurance. I was like, wait a minute now. I remembered we had insurance. And it didn't matter what broke, it was covered. Can I preach to you? Some of you might think you've lost things in 2020. But I came to let you know there is a blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Ah, it is covered. If you lost something, it is covered. Your marriage is covered. Your business is covered. Your family is covered. Your ministry is covered. Your friendships are covered. Your relationships are covered. Everything about you is covered. God wants to be involved in everything concerning you. And he wants to let you know that it is covered. All things work for the good. Your business might be going down, but it's going to work for your good. Your, your relationships might be going down, but it's going to work for your good. There is an assurance and an insurance we have in Christ that he will cover all things. All things. All things. I said all things, not some things. All things concerning you shall work for the good. You know what I love about dramas? No matter the drama, it always ends right. And I came to let you know, no matter the drama this year, keep loving God. It's going to end right. It's going to end right. You might have some turbulence here and there, but it's going to end right. May God preserve you. May God keep you in every situation. Stand to your feet and let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you believe.